Kim, what's on your radar? Well, I want to talk about the World Economic Forum's Young Global Leaders. We've talked about the World Economic Forum on the show before in regards to the Great Reset, a conspiracy theory that isn't a conspiracy theory, but an actual agenda to reshape how the world economy runs. You will own nothing. The elites will own and run it all. But don't worry, you'll be happy. The idea seems to be to move towards a technocratic corporatism where every aspect of our lives is monitored and controlled by others. Klaus Schwab, the founder of the WEF, is particularly upfront and even proud of his Great Reset agenda. He's built websites and even wrote a book. Another thing he's particularly proud of is his ability to shape and influence world politics through the World Economic Forum's Young Global Leaders Program. Now, you might have caught some wind of this organization on a recent episode of Joe Rogan's podcast with his guest, Majid Nawaz. Let's watch this clip. They call it on their own website, they call it the Great Reset. That's what they say themselves. Yeah, that's a bizarre thing to do, to yeah. openly. Why do you think they openly discuss it that way? And openly, because the Great Reset has always been this gigantic conspiracy theory yeah, yeah. among the online folks. Yeah. Like, this is all part of the Great Reset. Well, yeah. when he wrote a f- book called The Great Reset, you're yeah. like, hey, man, yeah. shouldn't you be hiding this? And, and, and in 2017 at Harvard, he's saying, you know, we're going to basically, all of these world leaders will penetrate their cabinets with our young global leaders. He's open. At this. He's open. Blair's open. During the Iraq war, Blair tried to bring in ID cards in Britain. He failed. Now he's back and he's trying to bring in digital ID during COVID. Right. So they're open about it. So this is going to be this never ending process to slowly move the goalposts towards more and more authoritarianism. Checkpoint society. It's all there. They they told us this. People have to realize this. Right. This is important. Now, Majid references the Young Global Leaders Program and how they've penetrated cabinets of governments. Him and Rogan go on to play a clip of Klaus Schwab in Har- at Harvard at that meeting. He was talking about bragging about this, and they play that audio clip over the Imperial March. So instead of us watching that, I have the actual video clip for you to see. Now, keep in mind, this is from 2017. Here it is. Um, when I mention our names, like Mrs. Merkel, um, even uh, Vladimir Putin and so on, they all have been young global leaders of the World Economic Forum. Mm -hmm. But um, what we are very proud of now is the young generation like uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, um, President of of, uh, Argentina and so on, that we penetrate the cabinets. So yesterday I was at a reception for Prime Minister Trudeau and I would know that half of this cabinet, or even more half of uh, half of this cabinet, are for our uh, actually young global leaders of the world economy. Right. Form. And that's true in Argentina too. Wow. Yeah. Sorry, that's true in Argentina as well. It's true in Argentina, and uh, it's true in France now. Mm-hmm. I mean, with the president, with a young global leader. So he mentions Angela Merkel, Vladimir Putin, Justin Trudeau, Argentina's former president, Mauricio Macri. He goes on to say that more than half of the Canadian cabinet are young global leaders. Same for Argentina and France. Again, this clip was from 2017, but most of these leaders, certainly their cabinets are still in power and have been during this pandemic. And interestingly, the names in the countries he mentioned in 2017 ended up being some of the most dystopian and authoritative during this pandemic. France and Germany have cracked down on the unvaccinated, implementing digital passports in order to live regular life. Emmanuel Macron has said he wants to make life as difficult as possible for the unvaccinated. Russia also implemented a QR code system during the lockdowns, which forced people to register their home and work addresses. And then the QR system would know if you tried to catch a subway outside of your route or schedule. A year ago, Argentina revealed a digital passport system for everyone 13 and and older in order to live a regular life. And we all know what's been going on in Canada. And as we've learned more and more about the virus and the vaccines, the measures are no longer making sense. Yet they remain. More and more people are beginning to join in on the chorus that this seems to be less about health and safety and maybe more about control and power. The conspiracy theorists were maybe right. Okay, so what exactly is this club of young global leaders? It was formed by Klaus Schwab in 2004. The group is governed by a board of 12 influential people, which have ranged from royalty to CEOs of major tech companies. The group is liberal with a very liberal agenda, which maybe explains why we've seen countries with liberal leaders all behave 
similarly during this pandemic. The current board has people like Prince Jamie from the Netherlands, who also is part of the Netherlands Climate Envoy, Eric Jing from the People's Republic of China. Eric is the CEO of Ant Group, one of Jack Ma's companies. Previous board members include people like Queen Rania of Jordan, of, of Jordan and Marissa Meyer from Yahoo. Young leaders must be under 38 and are nominated by alumni and serve six-year terms. But what do they do? And what does this leadership lead them to do? Who influences them, guides them? What, in, what incentives do they have to stay in the good graces of this elite club? That part we don't really know. But at minimum, we know that there is such a thing as groupthink. And my guess is these young leaders are thrilled and also intimidated to be nominated and end up going along with ideas in order to not stand out. If everyone else is saying this is the thing that's right and we all agree on it, even if they don't, People go along just to not be the lone contrarian. So groupthink is at minimum a consequence of being in this club, but it's more likely more than that. It's more likely the leadership is shaping this group to think a certain way so that when they ultimately infiltrate cabinets, they will likely tend to govern a certain way. That makes sense because that is the stated goal of the World Economic Forum and its Great Reset. There is a stated agenda. And of course, their Global Young Leaders program is a grooming ground for getting leaders in positions of power to usher in this agenda. So who else is in this club? Now, you might be surprised to hear some of these names, but here are some of them. Jacinda Ardern, the Prime Minister of New Zealand, Sebastian Kurz, former Chancellor of Austria, Zhu Zhao Zhuan from the Ministry of Science and Technology in the People's Republic of China, Pete Buttigieg, the only other Democratic presidential candidate besides Kamala Harris to get a cabinet position. Mark Zuckerberg, a man who has helped censor dissent. Tulsi Gabbard, I was actually surprised with how in line with lockdowns Tulsi was at the beginning of the pandemic. Dan Crenshaw is also a young global leader. People actually talked about a Tulsi Dan Crenshaw ticket. Alexander and Jonathan Soros, George Soros' sons, and several of the Rothschilds. Other names, Niall Ferguson, Van Jones, Jack Ma, Gavin Newsom, Stephane Bancel, the CEO of Moderna, Sanjay Gupta, Nikki Haley, Chelsea Clinton, Amal Clooney, Ashton Kutcher, Leonardo DiCaprio, and of course, Dr. Leanna Wen. Now, a lot of these names, guys, have a lot in common in that they, you know, the, these names have been on this list for a long time. This is not a recent list. The Young Global Leaders started in 2004. I went through the lists from 2004 up until last year. Um, and I was able to source these names. So these are not, you know, most of these people were on these lists well before the pandemic, yet what we see is that a lot of these people were very prominent during the pandemic. Um, and so this just kind of leads more, you know, adds more fuel to the flames when it comes to these, you know, what is this World Economic Forum? What is their agenda? What are they doing? And why are they getting so many influential people to shape and control our society? And not just here in the US, but all around the world. Yeah, I mean, it's an elite club. And I think if you look at, say, the top 10% of Harvard's graduating class uh, from from that year, you'll find, you know, similar similar overlaps between people who are now running the world. Or if you look at Oxford and Cambridge, like, you know, we, we it's a very it's a it's a very small club. You're not in it. These people are. And they they rise through the ranks and then they become global leaders. These are strivers. Uh, you know, that, that when you named Pete Buttigieg, like, of course, of course, Pete Buttigieg managed to, uh, you know, get himself into there. But the question of whether they're indoctrinating or or whether they're selecting for people who will agree with them, I think, is the, is is a different one. So, yeah. The, so in other words, yes, there are there is a there is a ruling class and these are people in the ruling class. And these are kind of internships to become functionaries of that ruling class. But the, the way that they select for who's going to be in it is who's willing to agree with our ideas. If Justin Trudeau himself, like the person of Justin Trudeau, decided that he doesn't believe in the things that are being spouted by the World Economic Forum or, or the things that you're supposed to believe when you graduate from Harvard Law School, they'd find a different Justin Trudeau. So it's not about indoctrinating an individual person. It's about creating a worldview right. that you have to then buy into if you want to rise up to positions of power. That's a great yeah. point. And I've always yeah. said that about media, by the way, when people always say, oh, the you know, the, the establishment, they tell you what to say when you're a newscaster. I'm like, no, they don't. They just find it's, people that they know will say what they want yeah, them to there's say. That, there's this and great they just clip. fire people. There's a yeah. great clip with Noam Chomsky where this guy is saying, so are, this guy's interviewing me and saying, so you're telling me I don't believe 
what I'm saying right now? And Chomsky's like, no, I believe you believe what you're saying. You wouldn't be sitting here if you didn't. Somebody right. else who believed it would be sitting here. And right. that's the point. You know, it's right. interesting to note how many of these names are were already famous people or famous people's scions. Right? Right. These are these are uh, Justin Trudeau, famously the uh, son of a revolutionary yeah, Cuban it? leader. Yeah. What what do these people have to offer other than their last name? I mean, this is legacy admissions. This is this is the already wealthy and powerful getting perks for their kids, their grandkids, their nieces and nephews. Um, it's just that's how that's how power works. So many. I mean, that's true in media. That's true in our industry. Yeah. Right. So right. many people in like editor. There are so many editor roles who are like, oh, well, you're a congressman's son or daughter or something like right. that. Right. Or a famous writer's son. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's 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 unbelievably nepotistic. Right. And it seems seemingly kind of incestuous in a way, right, where it's just yeah. like drawing from the same pool of people over and over and over again. And that is maybe why we're seeing certain ideologies that then are spreading from, you know, certain country to certain country. I mean, we New Zealand, Jacinda Ardern and Justin Trudeau. And we know that uh, Austria and Germany and France have all ruled with much of an iron fist during this pandemic. And yet they all come from the same sort of core group, you know, uh, of people with a, with a similar ideology. And so I think then, you know, and I agree with you, Ryan, I, I do think that they likely are selecting people that are likely to have a similar viewpoint. I don't think these people are controlled right. by the World Economic Forum or controlled by this global leaders or the 12, the board of 12. I'm sure these people have individual choice. It's just they often don't exercise it right. often so, because you don't want to stand yeah. out. You don't right. want to be against the grain or against and your friends. Some of, you know, some of them do. Go, I mean, Van Jones is on your list. He's an interesting right. uh, person, actually someone who's uh, consciously wanted to have conversations with Republicans, even Trump supporters, um, about topics that are important to him. You know, I think he's an interesting person. So it's not, you know, it's not that every single one of these individuals is some kind of, you know, mouthpiece for totalitarianism. But, but I, I, absolutely, your your point is, you know, taken about the incentives and the kind of person who gets it. Right, and somebody like Pete Buttigieg, he's going to go there to learn what he's supposed to say to climb through the ranks, or or take right. somebody like Josh Mandel who's just been a, a striver since he was in, in college and has changed his politics to whatever the Republican whims are at the moment. And now he's like this like extremist Trump supporting guy, yeah. uh, not because he was indoctrinated, because he's like, if I'm going to climb the ranks and do what I've wanted to do my whole life, which is be a United States senator, then yeah. just tell me the things that I need to say and I will and I will say them until you elect me. And, and that's what right. the system produces. The things that and people who rule us are willing to do to get there. Right. Just, yeah, and it is, just follow it Josh is showing, Mandel's career sickening. from college to today. It's just hilarious. I mean, this is like why we're not getting any new ideas in governments, right? I mean, it's just they're picking mm -hmm. from the same group and it's a club and everyone's got the same ideas. And so we just end up in the same old, same old position and not getting any of those outsiders in. And and that's, I think, one of the biggest problems with clubs like these is that they're they're very powerful. They're very influential. They've got a lot of connections. They have a lot of money. They're able yeah. to help people get into places of power and maintain those positions of power. Yep, you get in there, you got it made. And thanks, thanks so much, Kim. One day we'll be in that club. <laughs> oh, well, I'm, we're too old, Ryan. Robbie can still That's join. <laughs> Robbie, Robbie still has a right, shot. This way, right there we go. Robbie's older yeah. too, as well. Not. Uh, yeah, well, no, they said you're you 38. Guess no you can club be a for world us. No club for yeah, us. Oh well. 38 what are we gonna is do? the cutoff, Robbie. So you could still 30. be in. I do. Uh, I did finally mm -hmm. take. Uh, I was a Forbes 30 under 30. And you can't take that away <laughs> from me. Can never though, take that away. Uh, even though I'm well over 30 now. I wrote Do you that have was one, that was one of those user generated content pieces I wrote it so you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Rob. Thank you. Anyway, right. we will have more rising right after this.